Oh, well, hey guys. So, big jump from my last video. Um, since my last video was August 12th, today is August 21st. Um, after I made that video on Friday of August 12th, on the 13th of August, that Saturday started coming down with a virus, and um, this thing was really being a royal pain in my rear. Um, I just, huh. It took all day to get the transmission in, and um, first time we forgot to put the uh, throwout bearing in, <laughs> so we had to slide the trans back out, put the bearing on, and slide it back in, and then we realized that you have to have the dang clutch bearing and the darn clutch fork in at the same time, and I'll show you what I mean. I did finally get away around that with some fabrication, and then plus my clutch kit, was not the right kit. Oh, that hurt. I had to, uh, oh, that did not feel good. I don't know what I did there. But I had to fabricate or modify the clutch a little bit. Um, there's a nub on the flywheel side that was rubbing up against the, uh, uh, uh pilot bearing. Anyway, so, due to the stupid bell housing design, um, the little uh, ball stud here only went in so far because they put a hex on it so you could use a wrench and it stuck out so far to where you couldn't like on the 292 you couldn't slide this fork into place onto that uh, bearing there and pop it in the uh, throwout bearing was forced out too far so basically that meant I had to take the trans out again put this in and then hold this and the throwout bearing in place while they tried to slide it back <laughs> which wasn't going to happen so what I did is I took this ball stud out ground it down, ground the hex off and then tapped it all the way to the edge of the ball and then um, it was the taps were a little bit bigger so it made it nice and tight so I could use uh, vice grips to Bring it all the way there, slide this in, and then back it all the way out enough to where I needed it. So, that's that. And, due to the, the virus, it only took me two weekends to figure that out. <laughs> anyway, the uh, transmission mounts fit perfectly. You can see right there. It was a pain getting these mounts back on. I lost a little column for that. If I find it, I'll put it back in, of course, but <laughs> whoops. Anyway, oh, yeah, so it's been quite a quite a fight with this darn thing. But we're getting it. Got one of the heads on. It's uh, almost nine o'clock in the morning, so I gotta get inside, get cleaned up, head on to church, and, um, Anyway, I'm going to get this, get the heads torqued on, reprime the engine one more time, get all the front end stuff back on, and get it all full of water and fire it up. And, uh, oh, we should be good to go. So, anyway, I'll update you guys when something else happens here. Um, that was really a pain, but I'm glad it's over with. Um, just kind of give you guys an idea of what was going on with the clutch. This is the stock one, and as you can see, it's completely flush. And right here is where I had to machine down, because there was a little nub like this one has. You can see how this one's flush. See that nub? This is the Chevrolet style. This is the GMC style. They don't make this anymore. So I had to take my new one, and I had to go to Buddy's house and take his... Uh, uh, machine, or is, uh, <sighs> losing my track of thought, um, gosh, whatever it is, and then just slowly, uh, grind this down, it wasn't a grinder, it was, actually it was a machine, and, uh, made it flush, so, what, what's up, you gonna say hello, no, okay, so anyway, I'm glad that's over with. So, one beautiful thing 
you can't get the right clutch kit for these anymore. Um, so we're screwed. So far, the AMS clutch kit should work. Um, as long as it opens and closes and doesn't grind in the gear and allows me to get in and out of gear with these, I should be good to go. And we'll find that out sometime today. So, alrighty guys, talk to you later. Okay, well, see what happens. First startup. Well, actually, not the first startup, but. Oh! Runs! I gotta turn it off because uh, no water hooked to it. Well, there you guys go. She runs. She runs. No smokage or anything like that. So I think. We'll, of course, it's not hot yet, but. Amen. Uh, uh, the green beast. Yeah, good to go. I'm gonna finish my video real quick. So. Anyway. Oh, what a day. Had a bunch of grounding issues with it. Um, first went to hook up power and nothing was grounding out. And uh, all of a sudden it started grounding out and then uh, didn't have any dash lights. And then all of a sudden I had dash lights. So it's like it just took a little bit. But I'm going to put some ground straps, go to Napa, get some ground straps. I'm going to strap it from where this ground wire hooks and then strap it to the perch and then I'm going to go from uh, uh, this motor mount to the other perch and then I'm going to get a small ground strap that goes from the cab to the valve cover so that way everything's all ground out clutch does work I did uh, push the pedal in and out and I did verify that the uh, disc is going uh, there's clearance so there's plenty of clearance a little too much in my opinion but we'll adjust that later Oh, it has been a heck of a long day. Um, when I get some water hooked up to this thing, I'm going to get the valves adjusted. But for right now, I'm going to clean up this disaster. And uh, put a little more Lucas in it and call it good. Because I am exhausted and I'm sick and tired of <laughs> working on this truck, to be quite honest. I want to be working on that thing. So... Alrighty guys, she's running, see ya.